Good evening, and welcome to Big Z Sports' presentation of high school softball. Tonight, in this rivalry matchup, the Dover Tornadoes host the new Philadelphia Quakers. Tonight's game is presented by the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Wayne Door, Wood Electric, Wendy's, Unified Insulation, and McInturf Realty. Now, let's head to the field with Big Z Sports. Welcome to Dover Community Park and high school softball action with Big Z Sports and Claxon Communications. Today, we have the Dover Lady Tornadoes hosting the New Philadelphia Lady Quakers, thanks to the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joe Geckler along with Shannon Thomas. And Shannon, I think we went back in time maybe to like uh, December, January. It kind of feels like a football Friday night out here instead of it's a uh, April spring day, if you want to call it that, here at Dover Park as we get ready for this softball game. Yeah, you know, we're out here at Dover Park. We're not here to swim. I mean, our voices are kind of <laughs> like crackly right now. Weather's playing some uh, tricks on us. We'll get this all figured out. And these uh, girls are going to put on a – Pretty good softball game for us today here in the middle of winter. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. In the middle of winter is true as uh, we get ready. I think I have more clothes on today than I have had on since I went sledding the last time. Uh, and I think that was about a year ago when I went sledding. So it's uh, it's a cold day here, but we're going to have fun with some high school softball. Again, big thanks to Claxon Communications for uh, getting us on the air and, of course, our video feed making us sound good. And our uh, presenting sponsor today, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, as the uh, host, Dover Lady tornadoes will uh, uh, welcome in the rival from across the river the new philadelphia lady quakers going to come back and have our in the dugout segments with both coaches that's after this time out you'll see the big z sports right here with claxon communications on our youtube channel big z sports back after this Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes good luck this season. Hi, this is Jan McIntyre. The past 30 years, the residents in and around the Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff of McIntyre Realty for buying and selling their residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all of those communities, there is nothing better than high school sports. For myself and all the agents and staff at McIntyre Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season. And make the call to McIntyre Realty, 330-364-SOLD. Or find us online at McIntyreRealty.net. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with pigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. If you're planning a major concrete project, you need the help of Stocker Concrete Company. From precast concrete products to ready mix concrete, sand, gravel, limestone, and concrete block, the professionals at Stocker Concrete can help you get started and keep you on the path to completion using the best materials you can find. Stocker Concrete is the concrete material provider you can count on. See them at 7574 Route 36, Janaden Hutton, or call 740-254-4626. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. Welcome back to the Wood Electric pregame show. Joe Geckler in the dugout with New Philadelphia head coach John Dub Dubke, presented by Cush Financial Group. Coach, the Lady Quakers come into the game today with a 2-2 two and two record. How do you feel the Lady Quakers have been playing so far this season? 
Well, at two and two, you can say, well, you're doing 50%, 50% good and 50% bad. Um, we haven't played since March, so I don't know. Yeah, we've had, you know, we, we haven't played since last Thursday night, and unfortunately, we lost Thursday night's game up at Mansfield Madison after we beat them the night before that. So we've kind of sat on this now for nine days of that loss, and so I don't know what to expect right now, to be honest with you. Coach, a cold and windy day on top of the rivalry game with Dover. What do you know about them? What do you expect from them? Well, I have the utmost respect for both their pitchers they have over there, the Malt girl and the Lent girl. They're both excellent pitchers. Uh, I know they're going to be solid. They're going to keep games. They're going to keep low-scoring games. It's kind of what I told my kids last night. Like, we just got to get the bat on the ball, find a way to make some offense happen, and, and you know, take care of it that way. But it's definitely going to be a, a challenge tonight with their pitching. Finally, Coach, what are your three keys for the Lady Quakers to knock off the Lady Tornadoes and improve to 3-2 and two on the year? Uh, we're looking, like I said, we're going to try to put the bat on the ball, whether it's hitting the ball hard or, or laying the ball down for a bunt, um, whatever way we can get on base. That's what, we're going, that's what we're striving for tonight, get people on, try to move them around. The second key is to make sure we're playing solid defense against those guys, not letting the cold get to us. You know, I talked about that, saying the only team that's cold is the ones that are losing. Uh, winning teams don't feel that. Um, so make sure we're staying up playing the game tight up on the scoreboard so we'll, we'll feel okay weather wise and the third is make sure my pitchers keep you know keeping their hands warm so they can do their fundamentals in pitching it's hard to do it on a cold winter day if your hand gets cold like this and so keep them warm and we'll see what happens thanks coach good luck thank you that was new philadelphia head coach john john dubkey joining me in the dugout presented by the cush financial group coming up next dover head coach hannah duff joins me in the dugout right here with big z sports at Gillen Body Shop, they know that when their business is needed, it's never planned, and that can cause you quite the inconvenience. That's why Gillen Body Shop makes the process as easy as possible for you by making sure the work is completed right the first time. And Gillen Body Shop's experienced staff gives all completed work a 100% guarantee. So when those unplanned repairs to your vehicle are needed, there's only one choice. Gillen Body Shop on Cary Avenue in New Philly, or find them on Facebook. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what you need, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Are you ready to give your home a new look? Look no further than Wayne Door, your one-stop shop for all your residential needs. Garage doors, entry doors, windows, and patio doors, Wayne Door has everything you need to upgrade your curb appeal. With 24-7 emergency service, you can trust their technicians to be there when you need them most. Stop by the Dover showroom on State Route 39 or visit waynedoor.com and let the experts help transform your house into the home of your dreams. Wayne Door, more than just garage doors, from the people you can trust. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Welcome back to the Wood Electric pregame show. Joe Geckler in the dugout with Dover head coach Hannah Duff presented by the Cush Financial Group. Coach, with the crazy weather so far this spring, how do you feel the Lady Tornadoes have played so far? They've done a great job at adjusting to the cold weather. Um, the great thing is they want to play just as much as the next person, so when it's cold it doesn't really affect them for the most part. 
Well, talk to us about your seniors real quick. And uh, obviously, uh, seniors really help out programs a lot. With your first year as a head coach, obviously, you want your seniors to help out. Talk about your seniors. Uh, the seniors are great. They um, do a great job at helping the underclassmen. They follow directions. They do what they're expected to do. Um, they're also coachable, but they're also able to coach, which is also nice when you can't have eyes on every single person. They're able to help you out with that. Coach, the rivalry continues today. The Lady Quakers are in your way. What do you know about them and what do you expect from them? Um, I don't know a whole lot, which is sometimes kind of nice. Um, I expect a good game, like always. It's always more fun when it's a good competitive game. Coach, finally, what are your three keys for the Lady Tornadoes to knock off the Lady Quakers here today? Um, effective pitching, consistent defense, and powerful offense. Thanks, Coach. Good luck here today. Thank you. Thank you. That was Dover head coach Hannah Duff joining me in the dugout presented by the Cush Financial Group. Coming up next, the windy starting lineups and first pitch of the Lady Tornadoes and Lady Quakers right here with Big Z Sports. Find your path to success at Buckeye Career Center. Buckeye students earned over 3,000 industry-recognized credentials this past school year, and over 130 students participated in our school-to-work program or an internship at a local business. Let us help you get a jump start on your future in a career of landscaping and turf management, pharmacy technician, HVACR, CAD development and design, or any of our over 30 programs. Enroll today for next school year by visiting BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. Wendy's new breakfast two for three dollar biggie bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best: sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee, or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price and participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. At Gillen Body Shop, they know that when their business is needed, it's never planned, and that can cause you quite the inconvenience. That's why Gillen Body Shop makes the process as easy as possible for you by making sure the work is completed right the first time. And Gillen Body Shop's experienced staff gives all completed work a 100% guarantee. So when those unplanned repairs to your vehicle are needed, there's only one choice. Gillen Body Shop on Cary Avenue in New Philly, or find them on Facebook. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what you need, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. At Kaufman Realty and Auctions, you've got options. Your property is unique, and our agents know how to sell it. Whether it's a traditional listing or live auction, we'll earn you top dollar. Our agents will utilize whichever method of sale works best. When buying or selling your next home, call on Kaufman. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PAC. PACDrilling.com 
Welcome back to Dover Park. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas here with you for some girls high school softball. Big thanks to Tuscross Insurance Agency today and all season long as our presenting sponsor for Big Z Sports and on Claxton Communications. Today we have the Dover Tornadoes hosting the New Philadelphia Lady Quakers in some softball action. I'm going to run down your quick Wendy's starting lineups first, batting leadoff, number nine, Reese Loveday, she is catching. Number 18, Sarah Soweski, she's the designated player today. Number eight, Madison Wright, she'll be at shortstop hitting third. Batting fourth, Ellie Mason, she wears number 21 and plays third base. Number 10, Sarah Cardani, she'll be at second base batting fifth. Batting sixth, Peyton Murphy, she's in center field, wears number double zero. Uh, Sydney Vandal, play, she's in left field and wears number 22. Olivia Jackson, she wears 11, plays first base. Zoe DeVore, she's number two in right field. And Jillian Howard in the circle today for the Lady Quakers. She wears number 15 and will not hit today. Again, Love Day, Soweski, Wright, Mason, Cardani, Murphy, Vandal, Jackson, and DeVore. That's your new Philadelphia ladies starting lineup now for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. Number four, Jenna Malk. She's in a circle today, batting leadoff. Number one, Olivia McHugh. She's at third base, batting second. Batting third, number eight, Laney Kohler. She's at shortstop, batting third. Number, uh, Batting fourth, number two, Charlie Reese. She's in center field. Batting fifth, number 10, Susie Peltz. She's at first base. Number nine, Maddie Bantam. She's catching today for the Lady Tornadoes. Number seven, Sarah Clark. She's at second base. Number 17, Kara Lint, she's in left field. She wears number 17 and number 5, Madeline Falk, uh, Falkler. She's in right field, batting ninth. Again, Malk, McHugh, Kohler, Reese, Peltz, Bantam, Clark, Lint, and Falkler. Your starting lineup for the Lady Tornadoes of Dover. Again, beautiful day here at Dover Park, right, Shannon? Uh, you know, a little cloudy. It was snowing off and on. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a fun matchup, uh, a fun game here today, minus the weather, of course. Uh, the more we complain about it, the more people will not feel sorry for us. But uh, you know what? It's uh, it's good to be back out on the air doing some softball. And, uh, you know, uh, it's it's been a minute for me to do some softball action, but uh, good to be back out here. It was a little warmer the last time I did a game, I, I remember. But, uh you know, good matchup here today, the rivals of New Philadelphia and Dover. Yeah, and, and you know, a lot of teams are going to play today. Some teams have canceled due to the turf or the uh, dirt fields, but uh, Dover here with the new turf field, and they're going to play. And you know, this is only the second sporting event that I've been to since the football playoffs, where I've had to wear pants. The first, <laughs> the first one was a track meet. A track meet, huh? And the second one is a softball game. You know, I'm the I'm the type of guy that wears shorts all winter long, but. You know what? People can call me a sissy, but I wasn't wearing the shorts today. It, it's pretty cold up here in Dover Park. I, I was anticipating the shorts for you today, and uh, I walked up and I saw you. I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm actually proud of you for wearing pants today and uh, not going home and being cold and have those red legs. You know, sometimes you get uh, in colder weather. So. Well, if there's a crock pot of chili waiting for me, I would, but there's no <laughs> chili waiting on me. So we're going, we're going to have to toughen up today. and. Uh, these girls are probably tougher than I am today. You know, we had the Wendy's starting lineup on your way home. You can get some Wendy's chili on the way home. That sounds good, right? Wendy's chili and a spicy chicken sandwich. There you go. And, uh, you know, big thanks to all of our sponsors today, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, Wood Electric. We're in our pregame show, getting ready to wrap up our pregame show, our Wood Electric pregame show. That'll come up here. First pitch coming up here in just a moment. Of course, you heard our... Uh, Cush Financial Group uh, in the dugout interviews with both coaches. And, of course, uh, our first pitch today brought to you by the Buckeye Career Center. In uh, instant replay today on Claxton Communications brought to you by Wayne Dorr. And, of course, coming up after the game, our Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show, and we'll announce our McInturf Realty player of the game. But a long ways to go before we reach that. And uh, sit down. Uh, put a blanket on, get a cup of coffee or hot chocolate, and uh, tune in here as we uh, have our Buckeye Career Center first pitch coming from Jenna Malk. And the pitch, strike one, and this game is underway from Dover Community Park. No balls, one strike now to the leadoff hitter, Reese Loveday. The catcher, she wears number nine, bats from the right side. Yeah, Malk, she, she can bring a lot of heat with her. And, uh, last year she uh, – Kind of had her way with the Quakers, and the Quakers looking to bounce back today. The 0-1 pitch driven out to right center field. That's going to reach the fence and bounce one hop off the fence. As Loveday rounds first, hits second with a head first slide, a leadoff double for Reese Loveday to get the inning going for the Lady Quakers. Nice job by Loveday right there to put contact on the ball. She uh, she came in batting 467 on the year, and uh, she just helped her average out a little bit. 
That's going to bring in number 18, Sarah Sawesky, the senior, the designated player today. She pitches sometimes, and sometimes she is a designated pitcher. Sawesky bats from the left side, looks down to their coach. John Dupke gets the sign that she wants. Jenna Malk in the circle now trying to shake off the leadoff double by Reese Loveday. No outs here, top of the first. And the first pitch is going to be outside and low for ball one. Nice job by the catcher right there to get a hold of that ball. Loveday had a nice little jump over there at second. She was looking to go, but catcher did her job. Sweski looks down at her armband, now steps into the batter's box. Malk pitches. Slap hit down the line. That's going to be a base hit in the left field. As Loveday get a late break, she's going to take off around third and score easily as Sawesky gets to second with an RBI double, and the Quakers lead one to nothing. Yeah, Loveday got a late jump right there, but the left fielder misplayed that ball. He got by her, and that was able to get Loveday on around. Nice job by Sawesky there, that little slap hit up the third baseline. Couldn't get much tighter than that up the line. Man, it, it hopped over top of the third base bag and went down that line as the Quakers take the one nothing lead here at the top of the first inning at Dover Community Park. As Jenna Malk did not like the ball she had, she asked for another one, gets that. As Sawesky now on second base with an RBI double to yeah. give the Lady Quakers a one nothing lead. The pitch is going to be high and outside, ball one to Madison Wright. You know, and the way these two teams have been playing this year, that one that one run could be big late in this game. Now the 1-0 pitch. Going to be strike on the outside corner, says the home plate umpire. One ball, one strike to Maddie Wright. She's number eight. She plays shortstop. Bats from the right side for the Lady Quakers. She bats 462 for the Quakers. She gets the bat on the ball, exactly what they need now. No outs with Sawesky on second after an RBI double. Malk winds and pitches, and she went after the bunt. Did right, come up empty, strike two. Sawesky still on second base. One ball, two strikes now to right. Number three hitter for the Lady Quakers. One nothing. Bottom or top of the first inning here, Dover, New Philadelphia. High ball, uh, ball two. Excuse me, two balls and two strikes. Now to Maddie Wright. Yeah, the, <clears throat> the snow continues to fall here. That Roslyn bag is going to get a workout today by these pitchers. Two two count. Malt gets her pitch, spins it. Strikes her out swinging. Maddie Wright goes down for the first out of the inning. So one out, Sawesky on second. And then comes number 21, Ellie Mason. She is the third baseman for the Lady Quakers. Mason got to find a way to put this ball in play. See if she can get Sawesky around the bags. First pitch swung on. And driven down the left field line and foul out of play by Ellie Mason. No balls and one strikes now to Ellie Mason. Yeah, she jumped on that one a little early. She had just the right amount of power on it. If she could have just waited a second, she would have dropped that ball right there in between the left fielder and third baseman, but it, it, it tailed foul. No balls, one strike to the cleanup hitter for the Lady Quakers. Going to be on the outside corner, strike two. Now no balls and two strikes to Ellie Mason. The Lady Quakers lead 1-0 after an RBI double by Sarah Sawesky. Knocks in Reese Loveday, who doubled off the right center field fence to lead off the game. The 0-2 pitch now from Jenna Malk. Swung on and fouled off down the first baseline and off the fence. Count remains at no balls and two strikes. Mason recently just announced his... Uh... All Ohio basketball player for the Quakers. Great little basketball player for the Lady Quakers. Now she takes her talents to the softball diamond here in the spring. Probably wishes she was inside playing basketball today. Again, no balls, two strikes to the cleanup hitter, Ellie Mason. The two strike pitch line in the left field. That's going to get down for a base hit and it's going to get past the left fielder. So Wesky's going to score from second base as Mason hits second and she's headed to third. In with a head first slide, an RBI for Ellie Mason. I'll give her a single and a two-base error on that as it went through right through the wickets of the left fielder out. 
there as Kara Lint misplayed the uh, played the softball. So it's going to be two nothing now for the Lady Quakers over the Lady Tornadoes. Mason did a nice job right there. Got on it early. Put a little drive into it. That one's going to be high. So Sarah Cardani into the batter's box. The second baseman, the first pitch, was high for ball one. Two-nothing two Lady Quakers. The 1-0 pitch. Going to be right at the knees for strike one. Cardani comes in, batting 400 on the season. Four of ten. Ten plate appearances. I'm sorry, 12 plate appearances. Only 10 at bats, though, so she's four for 10. It's going to be a little bit low for ball two. Two balls, one strike now to Sarah Cardani. Second baseman wears number 10, bats from the right side. 2 nothing. Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes. Going to be on outside corner, strike two. Nice pitch right there by Malt. Kind of froze her looking at it. Two balls, two strikes now to Cardani. Number five hitter for the Lady Quakers. And the break-even pitch. Swung on. Shot to second base, fielded by the second baseman. She can't get a handle on it, and that's going to be another run batted in. That's going to be Sarah Cardini, or Cardani, excuse me, gets on first base, and Ellie Mason scores from third to give the Lady Quakers a 3-0 lead. Going to have a timeout on the field as head coach Hannah Duff going to pay a visit to the pitching circle. Take a quick 30-second timeout back after this with Big Z Sports. When you're traveling to the game, there's a great way to see your directional map on a new radio from Cartoons in New Philly. Just plug in your phone and all your maps and apps and Bluetooth devices are right on your radio. Cartoons carries a wide selection of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto radios from all of the name brands. From 7-inch screen radios to 10-inch screen radios, Cartoons has you covered. Stop in and see them on display and let Cartoons give you a demonstration. Cartoons, 517 West High Avenue in New Philly. Be there. Welcome back to Dover Community Park. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas. Big thanks to Claxon Communications, our Tuscarawas Insurance, Insurance Agency. Game of the week is the Dover Lady Tornadoes hosting the New Philadelphia Lady Quakers. The Lady Quakers lead 3-0 here in the top of the first. First pitch to number double zero, Peyton Murphy, is going to be a strike. No balls in, one strike now. Lady Quakers again up 3-0 here at the top of the first inning. RBI double by Sewesky, RBI single by Ellie Mason, and an RBI single by Sarah Cardani. No balls in, two strikes now to Peyton Murphy, center fielder, wears double zero. Yeah, that last RBI, Cardani, she got on that ball quick, and that thing was a rocket out there to the second baseman. Swing and a miss for strike three. The ball gets past the catcher. Nice heads-up base running by Cardani as she advances on to second, but the strikeout for out number two. Peyton Murphy strikes out. Two outs. Brings in number 22, Sydney Vandal, the left fielder. She comes in batting 438 on the year. Of course, younger sister to Carter Vandal. If you remember that name, New Philadelphia basketball, baseball legend here for the, uh, for the Quakers. First pitch going to skip to the plate for ball one. Yeah, nice job by the catcher, Matty Bantam. She got down in the turf and got that one, dug it out. One ball, no strikes. Two outs, top of the first, three nothing. Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes. 1-0 pitch, going to be a strike at the belt. One ball and one strike. Quaker still sitting in good position right here. Got two outs. We got a runner on second. Vandal could find a way to make contact right here. And the 1-1 one -one pitch. Just outside for ball two. Two balls and one strike to Sydney Vandal. It took a lot for Vandal to lay off that one. She, she had her eyes on it. She even picked that leg up a little bit, but she let it go. Two balls, one strike, the pitch by Mulk. Going to be bounced, chopped in front of the plate. It's going to go foul for strike two. Going to even the count now at two balls and two strikes. Oh, 
Hopefully we get all these names right. Some of the kids are wearing sweatshirts, got those numbers covered up. So, And the break-even pitch is going to be low on the turf for ball three. So three balls and two strikes, full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs here, top of the first inning. New Philadelphia Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes of Dover 3-0. RBI hits by Seweski, Mason, and Cardani. And a swing and a miss. Gets out of the inning, does Jenna Malk. But the damage done, four hits in an air, three runs. The Lady Quakers lead 3-0. Head to the bottom of the first after this with Big Z Sports. Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400. Fad here for TMK Valley Propane. The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Welcome back to Dover Community Park. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas for our Tuscarawas Insurance Agency Game of the Week. The Dover Lady Tornadoes hosting the new Philadelphia Lady Quakers. The Lady Quakers put three on the board at the top of the first inning and now coming to the plate and batting are the Lady Tornadoes. Again, we'll run down the starting lineups. We've got Malk, McHugh, Kohler, Reese, Peltz, Bannum, Clark, Lint, and Fockler. Uh, These are your starting lineups for the Lady Tornadoes. Tornadoes in the circle today for the Lady Quakers going to be Jillian Howard. She wears number 15, and she will do the pitching today for New Philadelphia. She's finishing her warm-ups, uh, but a big inning there in the first inning, Shannon. Three big runs on uh, three really hard-hit balls. Seweski's uh, double down the line was probably the, uh, the the lightest hit ball, if you want to say it that way, of the of the RBI hits. But uh, the, the the double to lead off the inning was a, was smoked into right center field and and uh, some hard hits there in the first inning. Yeah, the Quakers did what they had to do right there. Malk's a very good pitcher, and uh, they was able to come in and put up three runs right there, give themselves a little bit of cushion. Interesting to see what happens right here. Malk's the best batter for the Tornadoes, and they went right after her. She lines off the first pitch down the third base line into the dugout and out of play. So that's going to be strike one on Jenna Malk, the pitcher for the Lady Tornado. She wears number four, bats from the right side. Younger sister of T.C. Malk, if you remember that name for the Dover Tornadoes a couple years ago, football, basketball player. Jillian Howard in the circle today for the Lady Quakers. The 0-1 pitch, swung on and popped up, and it looks like it's going to get out of play, and it will. And that's going to make it oh, uh, no balls and two strikes now on Jenna Monk. Yeah, coming into this game, you know, I, I was wondering if Coach Dupke would walk her or if he would go after her. She comes into this game batting 556, got two home runs, got eight RBIs already early in this season. I mean, she's as good as she is in the circle. She's just as good in the box. Off-speed pitch taken for ball one. Nice pitch there for Howard to get Monk off balance a little bit. She almost chased it. She chose not to. One ball and two strikes now to Jenna Malk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, Jillian Howard in the circle today for the Lady Quakers. The one-two pitch swung on and fouled off back to the backstop. Count remains at one ball and two strikes. The snow's led up here a little bit at Dover Park. Not as windy as it was when we started the game. Love the chatter of high school softball. You don't get that too much in baseball, Shannon, but, man, during softball you hear all kind of chants and, and loud uh, loud stuff going on uh, during the game. The one-two pitch. Swung on and driven deep to left center field, and that is out of here. A home run. Jenna Malk puts a run on the board for the Dover Lady Tornadoes with a solo shot to left center field. That got out of here in a hurry as the – Quakers now lead 3-1 to one as Malk 
puts one out of here for the Lady Tornadoes. Yeah, and just like I said there, she's a, she's a very big bat, and anytime she gets in a box, it's got a chance to leave the yard. And Well, that one hit the, the housing development over there. Yeah, I'm, I would, I'd put up a big privacy, like a big green monster or something back there, uh, you know, getting your house pelted with uh, softballs and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, again, big home run there by Jenna Mock. That brings in Olivia McHugh, the third baseman. And she takes the first pitch and fouls it off for strike one. So, big home run there from Jenna Mock. Makes the score three to one, New Philadelphia. Bottom of the first ten. That's a line shot into left field. That's going to be a one-hopper off the fence. Oh, and now they called that a foul ball. Kind of an obstructed view here from where we're sitting. I couldn't really tell if it was fair or foul. looked fair, but they called it foul. Going to be strike two. No balls and two strikes now. Olivia McHugh wears number one. Bats from the right side. McHugh. She's got a, she bats 462, got four RBIs already on this season. Umpire's looking for a, a new softball. Yeah, the, the balls are going to get very wet today, and they're going to they're going to have to stay busy keeping them dry. Kind of like a rainy game in a football game. They keep the the footballs in a bag or wrapped up in towels and trying to keep them dry. And umpire's doing a nice job here today on a cold. Wintery slash spring day or spring slash wintery day. Yeah, Coach Duff for the tornadoes told him to go over there to the dugout, told him to pull some balls out of that box. They ripped open the box there, got a bunch of new balls out, getting the plastic off of them now. No balls, two strikes to the number two hitter, McHugh, for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. The 0-2 pitch, change up out front, got her swinging for strike three and out number one here in the bottom of the first inning. Big strikeout right there. Got her. She hesitated on it and didn't really want to go, but it was too late. She done come around on it. That's going to bring in number eight, Laney Kohler, the shortstop, and the number three hitter for the Lady Tornadoes. One out, three to one. New Philadelphia leads Dover. First pitch is going to be low and inside for ball one. So one ball, no strikes, and the 1-0 pitch. Going to be high and outside for ball two. <clears throat> Bottom one here at Dover Community Park. The Quakers lead the Tornadoes 3-1. Inside corner for strike one on the 2-1 pitch to Laney Kohler. Kohler the shortstop for the Lady Tornadoes. Again, where's number eight? Now the 2-1 pitch. Change up out in front of it again. Nice pitching there by Howard, keeping the Lady Tornadoes off balance with a changeup. Makes the count two balls and two strikes now. One out here, bottom of the first inning. Quakers lead 3-1. to one. And the break-even pitch. Swung on and dribbled to shortstop. Shortstop picks it up, fires it on to first. And that's going to be out number two here in the bottom of the first inning. Great job by the shortstop, Maddie Wright, as she flips it on to the first baseman, Olivia Jackson, to get out number two here today in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, nice job with Wright right there. She stayed with it. They got to her kind of slow. But she's able to make a nice throw over there to first base. It's going to bring in number two, Charlie Reese, the center fielder. She takes the ball inside for ball one. Two outs here, bottom of the first inning. Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes 3-1. to one. Jillian Howard gets her sign. Now the 1-0 pitch. It's going to be high and inside. Nice job by Reese to lay off of that. Going to be now two balls and no strikes. Howard tends to get herself behind in those first couple pitches and always finds a way to battle back. <clears throat> Two balls, no strikes, a 2-0 pitch is going to be fouled off down the third, off the dugout. 
Heads up over there. Is it going to make it two balls and one strike now to Charlie Reese, the center fielder and cleanup hitter for the Lady Tornadoes? Yeah, all the parents over there with their cameras and uh, Natalie Holbrook with her camera, they, they were all scattering. Didn't want to get those uh, expensive cameras broke. The 2-1 pitch again, fouled off back. That may get a car. Ooh, I think it. Oh, it hit the wire, saved the car. Hit the wire, saved the car. That's why the wires are there, folks, to save the cars from foul balls. <laughs> I thought that one had windshield written all over it. Yes, it did. I parked far away from here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the first, Quakers lead 3-1. 2-2 pitch, going to be a changeup short. And in the in off the turf, going to be three balls and two strikes now as Howard tried to go to the changeup to get Reese out front of it, and she chose not to. That's going to be grounded to the shortstop again, right on the first base, out number three, and that's going to do it. But one big hit there for the Lady Tornadoes, the home run by Jenna Malk. And after one, the Lady Quakers lead 3-1 to one over the Lady Tornadoes. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes good luck this season. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. The past 30 years, the residents in and around the Tuscarawas County have made the call to the Realtors and staff of McInturf Realty for buying and selling their residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all of those communities, there is nothing better than high school sports. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season. And make the call to McInturf Realty, 330-364-SOLD. Or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Welcome back to Dover Park. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas, and Big Z Sports coverage of high school softball today between the Dover Lady Tornadoes and the New Philadelphia Lady Quakers. We're in the top of the second inning. Lady Quakers lead 3-1 to one over the Lady Tornadoes into the batter's box. Number 11, Olivia Jackson, the first baseman, left-handed swings and misses at the first offering from Jenna Malk. Three big runs in the first inning for the Lady Quakers. Top of, the, top of the lineup did the damage. Now we're to the bottom of the lineup. Eight, nine, and one. Pop up. Oh, Back out of play. Back it's going to be oh, no balls and two strikes now to Olivia Jackson. Jackson bats from the left side. Plays first base. Jenna Malk. Now the 0-2 pitch. Going to be high and over the... Catcher's head to the backstop for ball one. Yeah, the umpire seen that come out of her hand. He knew it was going. He went ahead and made a quick duck. Yes, he did. And I'm surprised uh, he didn't kneel down there. That one uh, kind of slipped out of uh, Jenna Malk's hand, I think. So one ball, two strikes to Olivia Jackson. Inside for ball two. Two balls and two strikes. I think everybody was waiting for the umpire's call there, and he said, nope, inside. So two balls, two strikes to Olivia Jackson. The 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three and out number one here in the top of the second inning. It's going to bring up number two, Zoe DeVore, the right fielder. She bats from the right side. Again, where's number two? That was Malk's fourth strikeout of the game so far. Gave up three runs, but has four strikeouts. Again, 3-1, to one, top of the second inning. Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes. Three big runs in the first inning for the Lady Quakers. First pitch going to be high and outside for ball one. Beautiful facility here for the Lady Tornadoes, a turf field. 1-0 pitch going to be on the outside corner for strike number one. Beautiful turf field here for the Lady Tornadoes. They have grass in the outfield, but uh, turf infield and uh, all the way up to the dugouts. Uh, beautiful, beautiful facility here for the Lady Tornadoes. That's going to be ball two outside, of course, the 
Tornado baseball team. They have turf over there as well. I've called a couple games over there, Shannon, and uh, two nice facilities here. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the guys that we know keeps uh, keeps all this looking nice, and that's Travis McClellan here in the Parks Department for the Dover Tornadoes. Dover City as a ball was grounded back to the pitcher, Malk, and she gets DeVore at first for out number two. Yeah, that uh, I think that speed coming out of that box kind of caught Malk off guard a little bit, and uh, that, that for a minute, Love Day was going to beat it out, or not Love Day, DeVore. I thought she was going to beat it out. So two outs here, top of the second inning. Reese Love Day back in. She doubled off the right center field fence her first time up and scored on an RBI double by Sawesky. Malt gets her pitch and delivers. Outside corner, strike one. Yeah, let's see if this uh, top of the lineup can have success against Malk again. She's already got two outs, so she's got a little bit of a, what you say, leeway here that she can't make too many mistakes, though. Loveday had a double here on an 0-1 pitcher. First at bat, takes ball number one high and outside. Now one ball and one strike to Loveday, the catcher. Yep, we talked about Travis uh, keeping this park looking nice and getting these fields ready. I was teasing him today. I said, hey, like, do what you can. This is a cold day. Let's see if we can get a postponement. He said, nope, not a chance. As Loveday fouls it off back behind the screen as going to make it one ball and two strikes to Loveday. Two outs here top of the first inning. Of course, Travis's boy plays JV baseball for the Dover Tornadoes. I believe he's uh, – I believe he's over at uh, New Philly playing today, if I'm right by that. Again, foul ball into the dugout. Count remains at one ball and two strikes. Yeah, the New Philly and Dover boys varsity team is playing behind us right now over here on the home field. So, so the JV would be over at Philly playing. So I'm sure uh, Travis is dressed all warm and uh, watching his boy Noah play some JV baseball today against the Quakers across the river. One ball, two strikes, and the pitch. Going to be grounded the second baseman. Nice job backing up on it, and she gets Loveday at first. So one, two, three inning this time for the Lady Tornadoes, and after one and a half, the Lady Quakers lead three to one. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Do you hunt, fish, sow, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sug with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 littles with bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. If you're planning a major concrete project, you need the help of Stocker Concrete Company. From precast concrete products to ready mix concrete, sand, gravel, limestone, and concrete block, the professionals at Stocker Concrete can help you get started and keep you on the path to completion using the best materials you can find. Stocker Concrete is the concrete material provider you can count on. See them at 7574 Route 36, Janaden Hutton, or call 740-254-4626. Bottom of the second inning here at Dover Park. The Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes 3-1. to one. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas for Big Z Sports. Big thanks to Tuscross Insurance Agency for our presenting sponsor today for high school softball. Of course, big thanks to Claxton communications and their crew here today uh, making us sound good look good uh, as Casey's crew uh, always does a nice job for us whether it's football basketball baseball softball I think we're doing some track and field this year Shannon aren't we yeah me and Nick will be down at uh, Indian Valley host they're doing uh, the Dave Bell Invitational first year of that they're uh, honoring their long time uh, track coach was there <clears throat> he still volunteers at the full vault and then we're doing the IVC uh, championships, I believe, if that all comes together. So uh, lots of uh, Big Z sports action this spring, uh, kind of broadening our horizons a little bit, so to speak, as Jillian Haller Howard's first pitch to Susie Peltz is in the dirt for ball one. Peltz, Bantam, and Klar here in the bottom of the second inning. Lady Quakers lead 3-1 to one over the Lady Tornadoes. Susie Peltz wears number 10, plays first base. The 1-0 pitch is going to be outside and low for ball number two. 
You know, Shannon, last spring uh, I didn't get to hear any of your play-by-play -play as you filled in for me uh, several times after I was uh, put on the injured list, but uh, I may let you do some here today as the ball's grounded back to the pitcher and on to first base. Nice job by Howard as she gets the ground out of Pelts. It goes 1-3 to three if you're scoring at home. It's going to bring in the catcher, Maddie Bantam. She wears number nine, of course. The catcher today for Jenna Mulk. Jillian Howard in the circle with the first pitch. Swung on and driven down the left field line and foul out of play. Going to be strike number one to Maddie Bantam. Yeah, Bantam, <clears throat> Bantam it, was, it was in the zone where she wanted it. She just pulled the trigger a little early and drove out one foul down the left baseline. The 0 1 pitch going to be low in the, tur in the dirt, as I call it, but it's off the turf for ball one. It's a hard habit to break, low and in the dirt or low and off the turf. Which one you want? In the rubber. In the rubber. One ball, change up. Got her looking for strike two. One ball and two strikes. That had her fooled. Jillian Howard with a change up. Yeah, Howard's got a nice off-speed pitch. Man, it'll come out. You're like thinking you're going to have a shot at it, and it just creeps in there. One, two, pitch. Swung on and missed for strike three. As Howard gets Bantam swinging for out number two here in the bottom of the second inning with the Lady Quakers leading three to one. It's going to bring up number seven, Sarah Clar, the second baseman. Bats from the right side. As Howard gets the, the signal, dribbler to second base, fielded by the second baseman and on to first base as Cardani flips it on to first base to get the out for out number three here in the bottom of the second. And after two, the Lady Quakers lead 3-1 to one over the Lady Tornadoes. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. At Gill and Body Shop, they know that when their business is needed, it's never planned, and that can cause you quite the inconvenience. That's why Gill and Body Shop makes the process as easy as possible for you by making sure the work is completed right the first time. And Gill and Body Shop's experienced staff gives all completed work a 100% guarantee. So when those unplanned repairs to your vehicle are needed, there's only one choice. Gill and Body Shop on Cary Avenue in New Philly, or find them on Facebook. Top of the third inning here at Dover Park. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas. Big thanks to Tuscross Insurance Agency, our presenting sponsor all spring for high school softball and baseball in action. And a big thanks to Claxon Communications again for being here with us. The Lady Quakers lead 3-1 to one here at top of the third inning. Going to bring in Sarah Sawesky. She's first pitch swinging and dribbles it back to the pitcher's mound. And she is out on the put out 1-3. So one out here in the top of the third inning. As Sawesky grounds out to the pitcher, and that's going to bring in number eight, Maddie Wright. The shortstop, she struck out her first time up. Yeah, that one come off the end of Sawesky's bat a little bit. Couldn't get enough power on it, so he just kind of dribbled his way out there. Nice job by the pitcher and Mulk to come out of the circle to be able to get it to get Sawesky going down the first base line. So Maddie Wright steps in, again struck out her first at bat, swings and misses on the first pitch. Uh, update, uh, JV baseball game was canceled today. Big thanks to Greg Reneker for letting me know that. Uh, so they got canceled, but I uh, got an update for the baseball game right across the way from us. Bottom uh, bottom of the second, 1-1, one, one, all tied up between the Quakers and Tornadoes. Now the 0-1 pitch. Just outside for ball one. 3-1, to one, top of the third inning. Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes. Jenna Malk in the circle for the Lady Tornadoes. Maddie Wright lays off a high pitch there for ball two. Two balls, one strike. 
And the pitch swung on and missed for strike two. Two balls, two strikes now to Maddie Wright. Again, she struck out her first time up. One out here, top of the third inning after a ground out by Seweski. And the break-even pitch. Swung on and fouled off back behind us. That one will clear the cars and land over on the other side of the, the road. I pulled in and called Adam. I said, where are you parking at? He goes, I'm out in left field by the houses. I'm like, I'm going to be way down here in right field by the Porta John. So I'm going to hopefully uh, steer clear of any foul balls today. Again, the break-even pitch. Swung on and fouled back to the fence again as Maddie Wright keeps battling and staying alive here today. She's fighting off 2-2 uh, two -two pitch, consecutive 2-2 two -two pitches. Yeah, this is a big at bat for both Malk and Wright right here with only one out. It could make or break the inning. 3-1, to one, Lady Quakers lead, top of the third, 2-2 two -two pitch. Can be low for ball number three. Runs the count full now at three balls and two strikes on deck. Ellie Mason had an RBI single and a two-base error got her to third base. Break even, are they full count pitch going to be lined into right field and caught by the right fielder, Madeline Falk, uh, Falkler, for out number two. Yeah, nice job by Falkler right there. Falkler, it was kind of coming at her, then it started to tail to the right a little bit. She had to chase it and was able to secure the out. It's going to bring up the cleanup hitter, Ellie Mason, the third baseman, wears number 21. Again, RBI single back in the first inning. Got to third on a two-base error by the left fielder. The first pitch is going to be a changeup outside for ball one. The 1-0 pitch. Going to be low for ball two. The Quakers wearing all black today with red Red stripes, white numerals trimmed in red. And the 2-0 pitch going to be in the dirt for ball number three. Three balls and no strikes. The Lady Tornadoes in white pants, crimson socks, gray jerseys with crimson numbers trimmed in white. Now the 3-0 pitch. Strike one right down the middle to Ellie Mason. Again, one for one on the day with an RBI. And a run scored. Top of the third inning. Lady Quakers lead 3-1. 3-1 to one. To three to one, three one count on the cleanup hitter, Ellie Mason. Pitch fouled back. And out of play. That one hit hard. It hit something. I don't know what it hit, but it hit something. Counts full now. Three balls, two strikes, two outs here. Top of the third inning. Quakers lead 3-1 to one over the Lady Tornadoes. Now the 3-2 pitch outside for ball four as Ellie Mason draws a walk. It's going to bring up number 10, Sarah Cardani, the second baseman. She is one for one with an RBI on the day. First pitch going to be on the outside corner, strike one. Cardani with a single. And an RBI in her first at bat. Three to one here, top of the third inning. No balls, one strike. Pitch, off speed pitch. So no balls and two strikes now to Cardani, the second baseman, and the number five hitter for the Lady Quakers. The 0-2 pitch. Outside corner, strike three called, and that's going to do it. A runner left, and after two and a half, the Lady Quakers lead three to one. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what you need, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Are you ready to give your home a new look? Look no further than Wayne Door, your one-stop shop for all your residential needs. Garage doors, entry doors, windows, and patio doors, Wayne Door has everything you need to upgrade your curb appeal. With 24-7 emergency service, you can trust their technicians to be there when you need them most. 
Stop by the Dover Showroom on State Route 39 or visit waynedoor.com and let the experts help transform your house into the home of your dreams. Wayne Door, more than just garage doors from the people you can trust. Bottom of the third inning here at Dover Park. The Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes 3-1. to one. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas. Big thanks to Tuscross Insurance Agency. Coming up after the game, our Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show, and we'll present our McInturf Realty player of the game. Big thanks to Wayne Dorr today for our instant replay. And, of course, our other sponsors for Spring Sports. We appreciate all they do to allow Big Z Sports to bring you live softball, baseball, and track this spring. As the first pitch to Kara Lent is swung on and missed to make the count, no balls and one strike. Kara Lent, number 17, left fielder. She bats eighth for the Lady Tornadoes. Jillian Howard in the circle today for the Lady Quakers. The 0-1 pitch will be low and inside for ball one. Lent is also a, a very talented pitcher herself. So Tornadoes got two really good pitchers in Malk and Lent. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch just inside for ball two. Two balls, one strike, bottom of the third inning. Lady Quakers lead 3-1 to one over the Lady Tornadoes. We low and inside for ball three. Now three balls and one strike to Lint, the left fielder, the eight, the eight batter, 8-9-1 eight, and one to start the inning for the Lady Tornadoes. And a 3-1 pitch, swung on and fouled at the plate. Runs the count full now at three balls and two strikes. Now the full count pitch, swung on and driven to the shortstop. She has a problem with it, can't get a handle on it, and that's going to be a... A base runner now for the Dover Lady Tornadoes as Lent gets on. Shannon, what are you giving that? Are you giving that an error or a hit? I mean, you're my official scorekeeper. Oh, I'm your official scorekeeper? Yep. That, that one's a tough one to call. I mean, I thought it was hit hard enough that I, I would go with the single on it myself. So uh, we're going to give it a single for Kara Lent. Second hit of the game for the Lady Tornadoes. It, it was hit hard enough that it took a bounce off the turf that got to her pretty quick. It was going to be a hard play for her to make, you know, even if she got a clean play on it. First pitch to Fockler inside and low for ball one. Madeline Fockler, the right fielder, wears number five. A timeout now called by the catcher. You know, we could always check our book with Adam Sueskis. Big Z sports director also has a daughter playing for the Quakers, so he is the bookkeeper for that. Well, well, I got text uh, by our uh, unofficial scorekeeper. He said it was an E6. Was that Travis? That was Travis. Well, see, Travis, that's why I didn't play even, baseball. E even the uh, assistant principal of Philly said it was an E6 and has his own team. Hey, I didn't, I didn't play <laughs> baseball, so to me they're all base hits. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change it. Official score change uh, late in the inning. There, it's gonna be an error on the shortstop. And the one-one pitch swung on and missed for strike two. So a one ball, two strikes now to Fockler, the right fielder for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. Lint on first after the error by the shortstop. Swung on, bounces to the shortstop, gets it. Flips it to second, and that's, that's going to be an error on the shortstop on the throw to allow the base runner to make it there safely. So back-to-back -back batters and back-to-back -back errors by the shortstop. See, now I think they're just picking on her. You guys jinxed her. I didn't should, jinx her. Should have left, left her with the six. <laughs> that, now, that was, a, that, that was a legit error right there. She threw it uh, past the second baseman covering the bag. So that's going to bring up the leadoff hitter, Jenna Malk, the pitcher, wears number four. She put one out of here by about 30 feet here in the first inning uh, to give Dover their lone run of the day. Two run, nobody out after two errors here in the bottom of the third inning. No outs here, the bottom of the third inning, three to one, Lady Quakers lead. First pitch gonna be low and in the dirt. Nice job there by the catcher, Loveday, to block that from going to the uh, backstop. 
But ball one to Jenna Malk. You got to be careful here with Jenna. She showed uh, showed off her power there in the first inning. Yeah, and I think that's what she was trying to do right there, Howard. Was trying to go lower to her, try to keep her from getting a, a good hit on the ball and put it in the turf. 1-0 pitch going to be low again. Two balls and no strikes. Update from the boys' game, 1-1 one one after two between Dover and New Philadelphia just across the parking lot here from us at Dover Park. Two balls, no strength to Jenna Malk. Off-speed pitch, line down the third base line and foul just out in front of it was Jenna Malk, or that would have been uh, an RBI double at least for Malk. Yeah, that, uh, that off-speed pitch came at the right time. Malk had big eyes for it, and she got around on it real quick because it came in there so slow. So two balls and one strike to Jenna Malk. Again, one for one on the day with a big solo home run back in the bottom of the first inning. Two balls, one strike, and the pitch. Inside corner for strike number two. Two balls and two strikes now to Jenna Malk. Two on, nobody out. Bottom of the third inning, Lady Quakers lead 3-1 to one over the Lady Tornadoes. The 2-2 pitch, swung on again, fouled off down the third base line. The count remains at two balls and two strikes. You know, if I figured Travis had a game today, if I knew he didn't have a game, I could have took the day off and stayed at home. You could have. I, I picked this game up for Chris because Chris was supposed to do it and come and watch his niece play softball. Oh, yeah. Where's Chris at tonight? Chris is going to watch the Final Four in Cleveland. I offered to take the tickets off his hands and let him come to the game. I know, right? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would have took Gina with me. I would have bought her dinner. <laughs> the 2-2 pitch. Oh, just past the third baseman. That's going to be an RBI. Nope, they're going to hold up the runner at third base as Malk absolutely roped one down the third base line under the glove of Ellie Mason. That's going to make the bases full with nobody out. And uh, looks like we are going to have a uh, Coach John Dubke uh, talking to the home plate official about a home plate umpire about something. They're going to confer there in the center of the field. And uh, both umpires agreed that it was a, it was a hit. Dubke not happy with the call. So bases loaded now. Nobody outs after the hard hit there by Jenna Mulk. He was hit so hard, Shannon, that uh, the runner from second could not score on the hit so another single so two for two now for Jenna Malk Olivia McHugh into the batter's box now for the Lady Tornadoes with nobody out and the base is full of Tornadoes she struck out her first time up and the first pitch inside corner strike one Yeah, Howard now, she's going to have to she's going to have to help herself now. Bases are loaded and you got to try to limit the damage right here. See if you can pick yourself up a strikeout or two. Going to go through the heart of the order. You got 2 3 4 at least coming up unless you can get a double play here. The 0 1 pitch swung on and driven out to right field. The right fielder under it catches it. He's going to fire it to the plate. There's going to be a play at the plate. She's safe at the plate. And that's going to be an RBI sack fly from Olivia McHugh. Nice throw, though, there by the right fielder, Zoe DeVore. Almost had the runner at the plate length, but she got in under the tag to make the score 3 to 2 now. But there is one out here in the bottom of the third inning. Yeah, nice job by Lent right there. She slid, and she slid on the back side of the box right here to get to the plate. If she comes towards the front side of the box, she probably would have been out. So Laney Kohler steps in, drops a butt down, and that goes foul for strike one. So we have runners on the corners with one out. Laney Kohler at the, at the plate for the Lady Tornadoes. No balls and one strike. Three to two, Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes. The 0-1 pitch, swung on and driven out the right field. Again, DeVore makes the catch, fires at the first base, and she gets back. The, the 
The field umpire says she got back in time where they almost doubled off Jenna Malk at first base. Nice heads up play there by Zoe DeVore in right field. But two outs now with runners on the corner still as Kohler lined out to right field for out number two. Yeah, nice job by DeVore out there. Good catch by the first baseman. That ball gets by her. This runner on third was already about you know 10 feet off the bag. First pitch going to be popped up. Second baseman calling for it. Called off by the right fielder, DeVore, and she makes the catch for out number three. One run, though. Couple of errors on the Lady Quakers in the bottom of the third inning. But after three, the Lady Quakers lead three to two. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Cush Financial Group has been proudly serving the financial needs of local community members for over 35 years. The team at Cush Financial follows an industry-leading service model with the unique approach and fiduciary responsibilities associated with their board-certified financial planner. With over 75 years of combined experience, the advisors at Cush Financial Group are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Contact the office at 330-308-8700 or visit cushfinancial.com to schedule your free consultation today. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Independent Capital Company Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Welcome back to Dover Park. Top of the fourth inning. Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes 3-2. to two. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas for girls high school softball. Big thanks to Tuscarawas Insurance Agency as our presenting sponsor today and all season long during spring sports for Big Z Sports. Again, 3-2. to two, Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes into the box now. Peyton Murphy, the center fielder, she struck out her first time up back in the first inning. First pitch by Malk, swung on and fouled off to the backstop for strike one. Bats from the right side, wears double zero, plays center field for the Lady Quakers. Now the Malk gets another strikeout here on the day. Left fielder, she wears number 22. First pitch. Called an illegal pitch there. Vandal struck out her first time up for out number three in the first inning for the Lady Quakers. Called an illegal pitch. So Vandal steps back in now. First pitch, swung on and driven out to right field and right into the glove of the right fielder, Fockler, for out number one. Uh, that's out number two. Excuse me, out number two. Thank you, Shannon. I thought I messed up in my scorebook again with all these errors and strikes and stuff. <laughs> but I knew there was a strikeout before that there one. There we go. So out number two. First pitch now to Olivia Jackson is going to be low and outside for ball one. Two outs here, top of the fourth inning. Lady Quakers lead 3-2 to two over the Lady Tornadoes. Now the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss for strike one. Malk. Put a little extra on that. She reared back and let it fly for strike one. One ball, one strike, two outs here, top of the fourth. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and dribbled to shortstop. Shortstop fields, throws on to first for out number three. Nice play by Laney Kohler to get out number three here in the top of the fourth inning. 1-2-3, go the Lady Quakers. After three and a half, the Lady Quakers lead 3-2. to two. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Find your path to success at Buckeye Career Center. Buckeye students earned over 3,000 industry-recognized credentials this past school year, and over 130 students participated in our school-to-work program or an internship at a local business. Let us help you get a jump start on your future in a career of landscaping and turf management, pharmacy technician, HVACR, CAD development and design, or any of our over 30 programs. Enroll today for next school year by visiting BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. 
Wendy's new breakfast two for three dollar biggie bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best: sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee, or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price and participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Welcome back to Dover Community Park. The first pitch to Susie Pelt swung on and missed. First strike number one. We're here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Three to two, Lady Quakers. Hope everybody lead, at home is, lead the Lady Tornadoes. Hope everybody at home is enjoying this, but we're having a little bit of problems with the stream here. We lost it a couple times because of the weather. Yeah, that happens. Going to have that once in a while. So one ball, one strike now to Susie Peltz, the first baseman. Where's number 10? Bats from the left side. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and dribbled back to the first, uh, back to the pitcher, excuse me, Howard, as she flips on to the first baseman, Jackson, for out number one here in the top or the bottom of the fourth inning. So Maddie Bantam steps into the batter's box now. She struck out her first time up today. Again, Lady Quakers lead 3-2 to two over the Lady Tornadoes. First pitch, going to be outside for ball one. Middle of the third inning across the parking lot, still tied at one between Dover and New Philadelphia on the baseball diamond. Here we have 3-2 to two Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes. As the ball is popped into right field, and that's going to be a foul ball, excuse me, left field, in, uh, going to be a foul ball. As Bantam got underneath it, and it just went foul. One ball, one strike, one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And the 1-1 pitch, swung on and... Popped up again. DeVore comes from right field and makes the catch for out number two. DeVore playing a nice right field today for the Lady Quakers for out number two. She's had four, four of the last five putouts for the Lady Quakers. Going to bring in Sarah Clar, the second baseman. Where's number seven? She grounded out to the second baseman. Cardani, her first up, her first time up. So two outs here, bottom of the fourth. First pitch, going to be low for ball one. That wind can die down again if it wants. I'm not a big fan of it. One ball, no strikes. Inside corner, strike one to Sarah Clar. Clar, the second baseman. Again, where's number seven? Bats from the right side. Grounded back to the pitcher, Howard, on to first base, Jackson. And that's going to do it for the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left after four. The Quakers lead 3-2. to two. Back after this with Big Z Sports. At Gill and Body Shop, they know that when their business is needed, it's never planned, and that can cause you quite the inconvenience. That's why Gillen Body Shop makes the process as easy as possible for you by making sure the work is completed right the first time. And Gillen Body Shop's experienced staff gives all completed work a 100% guarantee. So when those unplanned repairs to your vehicle are needed, there's only one choice. Gillen Body Shop on Cary Avenue in New Philly or find them on Facebook. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what you need, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Top of the fifth inning, Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes 3-2. to Going to have 9-1-2 and two for the Lady Quakers. DeVore, Loveday, and Sewesky here in the top of, or top of the fifth inning. Uh, Jenna Mulk still in the circle for the Lady Tornadoes. First pitch. Outside corner, strike one to Zoe DeVore. 
DeVore bounced back to the pitcher's mound. Pitcher's circle, her first time up. Three to two, top of the fifth inning. Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes. The 0 1 pitch. Swung on and missed for strike two. Now no balls and two strikes to the right fielder, Zoe DeVore, for the Lady Quakers. Where's number two? Bats from the right side. The 0-2 pitch now from Mulk. Just outside and low for ball one. Apologize for the wind in the mics as you can hear it. Wind's picking up a little bit here. Line drive to the shortstop. Just out of the reach of the shortstop. That's going to be a single for Zoe DeVore and a hit to start the top of the fifth inning for the Lady Quakers and brings in the leadoff hitter, number nine, Reese Loveday. Yeah, nice job by DeVore right there. Got enough bat on it, hit it hard enough to get it past the shortstop out in the center field. Now to the top of the lineup for the Quakers. Love day, one for two on the on the day as an RBI or a run scored, doubled off the right field, uh, right center field fence. Her first time up, came around to score on a double by Sawesky. First pitch to Love Day, Love day is going to be high and outside for ball one. The Moore had a big jump over there at first base, but they they weren't going to play around with her. They just throwed it back to Malk and said, "Go back over to the bag." So one ball, no strikes to Reese Loveday, the catcher. She wears number nine. Again, big double in the first inning. Again, on the outside corner for strike number one. One ball, one strike. Nobody out here, top of the fifth inning. Single by DeVore to lead off the top of the fifth. Brings up the top of the order now. Reese Loveday, Sarah Sawesky on deck for the Lady Quakers. Malt gets her sign, delivers. Fouled off at the plate for strike two. One ball and two strikes now to Reese Loveday. Quakers lead three to two here, top of the fifth inning on a cold, blustery day at Dover Park. The one-two pitch swung on and fouled back to the fence and out of play again. So one ball and two strikes. The count remains to Reese Loveday, the catcher. For the Lady Quakers. Now she calls time, walks out, and talks to head coach John Dubke at third base. Getting instructions. So Dubke is uh, talking to the uh, home plate umpire. <clears throat> I think Loveday seen something that Malk was doing and kind of wanted to bring it to her coach's attention. So, one ball, two strikes now to Loveday. Rocks back and fires. Off the fence behind the catcher for foul ball. The count remains at one ball and two strikes. Loveday one for two on, on the day. Ground out to second and a double with a run scored for the Lady Quakers. One ball, two strikes, Malt gets her sign, now delivers. Again, fouled off down the right field line and out of play. Count remains again at one ball and two strikes. Loveday doing a nice job staying alive at the plate. Yeah, Loveday after that one took her right hand off the bat and kind of wiggled it. Might have stung a little bit. Got off the end of the bat and jolted her a little bit. One, two pitch. It'll be again a foul ball. A nice job by Loveday to stay alive. Takes a deep breath there as she said, ooh, I got a piece of that one to stay alive. If not, that would have been strike three. As Loveday now steps back in, squats down, and gets ready for the one-two pitch from Mulk. Ooh, that hit her right in the helmet. Takes a deep breath here. The... Uh, Head coach John Dubke walks out, uh, got her right in the ear hole. But uh, she seems like she's doing okay. Kind of scared her, I think, more than anything. The umpire's talking to her a little bit. Ooh, she uh, a little shaken up there, kind of uh, shook her up a little bit. I think they're going to have a courtesy runner for her. That's going to be number uh, 55 for the uh, Lady Quakers, and that's going to be uh, – 
Keelan Jones going to come in and run for Love Day. I don't think she's going to exit the game. I think she's just going to get a breather there after taking one off the, the ear hole. So hit by pitch as Love Day. Gets hit by the pitch and a courtesy runner again as Jones on first now. Soweski, Sarah Soweski, number 18, the designated player, steps in, bats from the left side. She is one for two on the day with an RBI double. Takes the first pitch, strike one down the middle as she uh, runs up to slap hit that softball. Didn't like the pitch, laid off of it now. No balls and one strike. Nobody out here, top of the fifth inning. Soweski. He'll one pitch, tries to bunt at it, and misses. That's going to be strike two. The runner off to third, and she is safe. Both runners advance on the stolen base. Nice job by Lo uh, Jones running for Loveday and DeVore. DeVore got to third. Now no balls and two strikes on Soweski. Runners on the pond here for the Quakers, and it's going to be a foul ball. Good job from Soweski right there just to get a piece of it. Stay, stay, stays alive. No balls and two strikes. They say she slapped at that. Did the home plate umpire? Dover coaching staff says she was bunting at it. But the home plate umpire said no, she swung at that ball. Got a timeout on the field here as the uh, field umpire talking to the pitcher. Appearance by uh, Connaughton Valley Athletic Director. Eddie Marsh here today. He comes they're, they're discussing. They're saying the ball was foul tipped, and they're saying the that the catcher coaches are saying the catcher caught it off the foul tip, but the umpire at third base is saying no. So must have missed, missed the pitch there. One ball and two strikes to Sawesky. Going to be low and in, low and outside for ball number two now. To Sarah Sawesky. Nobody out here. Top of the fifth inning. Lady Quakers lead 3 to 2 over the Lady Tornadoes. Sarah Sawesky has a 2 2 count on her. She's 1 for 2 on the day with an RBI. The 2 2 pitch going to be slapped down the line. That's going to be foul. And the count remains at two balls and two strikes. Nice uh, idea there from Sawesky, but it just dribbled foul. Yeah, nice job at the third baseman, too. That ball had some spin on it. It possibly could have went back fair, but she made sure she scooped it up in foul territory. Across the park here, one-to-one -one after three between Dover and New Philadelphia on the baseball diamond. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three as Soweski strikes out for out number one here in the top of the fifth inning. That was Malk's seventh strikeout. I was just counting that up, Shannon. Seven strikeouts, like you said, and uh, going to bring in number eight, Maddie Wright, the shortstop. She's flied out to right field and struck out today, 0 for 2 for the Lady Quakers. Runners on second and third, one out here in the top of the fifth inning. Just outside for ball one. Uh, he strike. called that a strike. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought I heard him say outside, but he did say strike. So no balls and one strike to Maddie Wright. Shortstop tried to bunt at it and missed it. Now no balls and two strikes. Runners on second and third with one out here for the Lady Quakers. Got on with a single. Did Zoe DeVore. Reese Loveday got hit by a pitch. They had a courtesy runner of Keelan Jones come in to run for her. Going to be a ground ball to second. Nice pickup. A run's going to score, though. Nice job by the second baseman, Klar, to get the out at first. But the run does score in DeVore to make it 4-2. to two. Lady Quakers over the Tornadoes. An RBI ground, ground out by Maddie Wright. So Ellie Mason steps in. She is one for one on the day with a walk. Just outside for ball one. She also has an RBI. There's an RBI single with a two base error. Her first time up scored Soweski. She walked her second time up and was stranded. And a 1 0 pitch. Low and inside for ball number two. Wind's picking up here at Dover Park, as you can hear on our microphones. Now the 2 0 pitch. 
Just outside for ball number three. Now three balls and two strikes to Ellie Mason, the third baseman and cleanup hitter for the Lady Quakers. One for one on the day with a walk and a run scored and an RBI. A 3-0 pitch. Outside corner, strike number one. Yeah, Malk wasn't taking no chances on that pitch. He just threw it belt high and said, if you want it, go get it. And Mason never caught up with it. So the runner for Love Day is at third now. Three balls and one strike. The pitch to Mason. Going to be low and outside for ball number four. The second walk of the day for Ellie Mason. And the second walk of the day issued by Jenna Malk. Brings in number 10, Sarah Cardani, the second baseman. She's one for two on the day with an RBI single and a strikeout. First pitch. Going to be high and outside for ball number one. Top of the fifth, four to two. Quakers lead. Hard ground ball down the first baseline and foul for strike number one. Again, top of the fifth inning, 4-2. to Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes. One ball, one strike to the batter, Sarah Cardani. Jenna Malk in the circle today for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. Now delivers the 1-1 pitch. Swung on and missed as the runner, Mason, moves up to second base on the pitch. So that puts runners now at second and third with two outs. And a 1-2 count on the hitter, Cardani. Cardani has an RBI single, her first at bat, back in the first inning. Knocked in the third run of the game for the Lady Quakers. Now the 1-2 pitch. Just outside for ball number two. Count even now at two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on. Now the break-even pitch, high and outside for ball three. Runs the count full now at three balls and two strikes. Cardani, again, one for two on the day with a strikeout and RBI single. Full count, two outs here in the top of the fifth inning. The payoff pitch. Swung on and missed for strike three as Malt gets out of the jam with only giving up one run on the inning. So after four and a half, New Philadelphia leads four to two over the Lady, uh, Lady Tornadoes of Dover. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Live more comfortably this winter with the help of Unified Insulation Systems. Unified Insulation Systems is a full-service insulation and weatherization provider that can show you how to properly insulate your home or business. With good insulation from Unified Systems, you can prevent your gutters from freezing and get rid of your high-energy bills. Call Jeremiah Thomas today for your free quote at 330-773-7377 or visit unifiedinsulation.com. Call Unified Insulation Systems today, your most trusted name in insulation. At Kaufman Realty and Auctions, you've got options. Your property is unique, and our agents know how to sell it. Whether it's a traditional listing or live auction, we'll earn you top dollar. Our agents will utilize whichever method of sale works best. When buying or selling your next home, call on Kaufman. Bottom of the fifth inning here at Dover Park. New Philadelphia Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes 4-2. to two. And in uh, this inning, you're going to have 8-9-1, Lint, Fockler, and Mulk for the Lady Tornadoes. Howard still in the circle. The first pitch going to be high and outside for ball one. Kara Lint, she reached on an error. Originally scored a hit. We changed it to an error back in the third inning. Going to be dribbled down the third baseline and foul for strike one. One ball, one strike. Lint scored one of the two runs for the Lady Tornadoes. Bottom five here at Dover Park. Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes four to two. Now the one-one pitch to Lint. Change up, strike on the inside corner for strike two. One ball and two strikes now to Kara Lint, the left fielder. Where's number... 17, 
Bats from the right side. And the pitch. Swung on and miss. Strikeout for Howard in out number one here in the bottom of the fifth. It's going to bring up number five, Madeline Faulkler. She reached on an error as well by the shortstop. Her first time up on deck, Jenna Malk for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. First pitch, inside corner, strike one. Big inning right here for Howard if she can get out of this inning. Going inside for ball number one. Yeah, they, you don't want to get too many on uh, with Malk coming up and then the two, three, four, the heart of the order for the Lady Tornadoes. One ball, one strike, one out here. Bottom of the fifth inning. Lady Quakers lead four to two. Going to be high and outside again for ball number two. Two balls and one strike now for Fockler. Again, 0 for 1 on the day. Reached on an error by the shortstop. 2-1 pitch. Swung on and fouled back behind us for strike number two. And that got something over there. Hopefully not a windshield or a window at that. Two balls and two strikes now to the number nine hitter, Madeline Faulkner. The 2-2 pitch swung on and, oh, just, just foul as the Dover coaches want that to be a fair ball. They thought the first baseman, Jackson, was in fair territory when she touched the uh, softball. Shannon, that, that was right down your line of view. Did you see it? I couldn't see it because the umpire stepped right in front of me. So, I, I, I mean, he called it right away. So, you, you got to go with it. He had the call. So a 2-2 count now to Fockler. The 2-2 pitch swung on and dribbled back to the pitcher, Howard. She flips on to first base, and Jackson fields it and records out number two, one to three, with two outs now. All right, well, I'm telling you now, I didn't play baseball. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about the game, but I do. I know I put her on base. Yeah, he's already doing it. He just did what you said. He's walking Jenna Malk. As uh, Dubke walks up, head coach John Dubke walks up to the home plate umpire, said intentional walk her. So Jenna Malk on with the intentional walk. That's going to bring up Olivia McHugh. Had a sacrifice fly in an RBI, her last at bat. First pitch swung on. They're going to fire down to second. Oh, just comes out of the glove with a shortstop. Maddie Wright, they may have had Jenna Malk stealing second, but uh, Malk got in there as a stolen base for Jenna Malk. Now runner on second with two outs and a 1-0 count to the batter, Olivia McHugh. McHugh 0 for 2 on the day. Going to be a strike right down the middle. One ball, one strike now to McHugh. Again, 0 for 2 on the day with an RBI. Sacrifice fly. Her last at bat struck out her first at bat. The 1-1 one -one pitch now. Change up high. As Mulk gets a huge secondary lead to make the catcher come halfway out to the circle to give the ball back to the pitcher. Two balls and one strike now to McHugh. The 2-1 -one pitch. Inside corner. The umpire says just inside for ball number three. Three balls, one strike, two McHugh. Malk on second after the intentional walk and stolen base. The 3-1 pitch. High for ball four as McHugh takes her base. And now two on now for the Lady Tornadoes. And that's going to bring in Laney Kohler. She lined out to the right fielder. DeVore and grounded out to the shortstop. Maddie Wright in her two plate appearances today. Two on, two out for the Lady Tornadoes, bottom of the fifth. Inside again, they fire down to first base. And they called her safe at first base. The field umpire made the call way over from the shortstop position. He's way over in between shortstop and third base. He said safe. But Mulk was able to swipe third. On the throw down to first. Looks like uh, McHugh may have jammed her wrist going back in head first to first base. One ball, no strikes to Laney Kohler. 
And the 1-0 pitch. High and outside, they fire down to third base to try to get Malk. They're gonna, sh they're gonna shoot it down to second. Nice job by the second baseman, Cardani, fielding the throw on a short hop, keeping it in front of her. If it goes into right field, Malk scores easily from third as John Dupke calls timeout to walk out to the mound, to the circle to talk to his pitcher, Jillian Howard. We'll take a quick timeout with this trip to the mound. Back after this with Big Z Sports. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at packdrilling.com. Bottom of the fifth inning, two outs here as the Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes four to two. There's two outs, two balls, no strikes to the batter. Laney Kohler, Mulk on third, McHugh on first. Runners, or excuse me, McHugh on second now. So two balls, no strikes to the batter, Kohler. Pops it up in the infield. Looks like the second baseman is going to take charge and has it, and she does. Nice job by Sarah Cardani to get the Lady Quakers out of the inning after giving up uh, a couple base runners. But after five innings, the Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes 4-2. to two. Back after this with Big Z Sports. When you're traveling to the game, there's a great way to see your directional map on a new radio from Cartoons in New Philly. Just plug in your phone, and all your maps and apps and Bluetooth devices are right on your radio. Cartoons carries a wide selection of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto radios from all of the name brands. From 7-inch screen radios to 10-inch screen radios, Cartoons has you covered. Stop in and see them on display and let Cartoons give you a demonstration. Cartoons, 517 West High Avenue in New Philly. Be there. Reduce your energy costs and get rebates up to $400? Fad here for TMK Valley Propane. The Ohio Propane Council offers Ohio residents rebates for installing new propane water heaters and furnaces. Heck, even licensed installers can receive incentives for installation. Visit OhioPropaneRebates.com. This public service announcement is brought to you by your friends at TMK Valley Propane. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Welcome back to Dover Park. Top of the sixth inning, Lady Quakers lead the Lady Tornadoes 4-2. to two. Joe Eckler, Shannon Thomas here for Big Z Sports. Big thanks to Tuscross Insurance Agency as our presenting sponsor for high school sports this spring. The first pitch to our leadoff hitter, Preston Murphy, is going to be outside for ball number one. Peyton Murphy, excuse me, I called her Preston. Peyton Murphy, my uh, ink was smeared by the uh, snowflakes from earlier. So Peyton Murphy, the center fielder, she struck out twice here today for the Lady Quakers. Swung on, hit to the shortstop, fielded on to first base for out number one. Nice play there by the shortstop, Laney Kohler, to field that and fire it on to first base for out number one here in the top of the sixth inning. Quakers lead four to two. Yeah, I don't know if Malk got a piece of that one just a little bit to knock it down, but either way, it was a nice job on the shortstop to come up there and get it off the turf. Sydney Vandal now stepping in. She lined out to right field and struck out today. 0 for 2 for the Lady Quakers, who lead 4 to 2 over the Lady Tornadoes, top of the sixth inning. Malk gets her pitch, fires it outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes, top of the sixth inning. Vandal in the plate. Checks her swing, but called strike one anyway by the home plate umpire. One ball, one strike. Again, Vandal 0 for 2 on the day, lined out to right field and struck out her first time up in the first inning. 1-1 one, one pitch, grounded just out of reach of the second baseman. That's going to be a single into center field, and that brings up Olivia Jackson for the Lady Quakers. She's 0 for 2 on the day. She grounded out to the shortstop and struck out. So we got a timeout here. So 
Well, Coach Dupke talking to the home plate umpire. Looks like she's going to make a uh, an adjustment here. Number 55 looks like she's going to come in. Kaylin Jones going to bat for Olivia Jackson. We'll see if she stays in, but she bats from the left side. Her first at bat here. Runner on first after the single. First pitch, swung on and missed. So, no balls and one strike to Jones. Pinch hitter for Olivia Jackson. Runner on first is Sydney Vandal after the single to center. Puts a bunt down, does Jones. Nice job fielded by the third baseman. And she is out at first, but nice play by the third baseman there for the Dover Tornadoes, McHugh. And she gets the speedy Jones down the line, but the runner advances on to second. Now with two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Going to bring up number two, Zoe DeVore, the right fielder. She singled and scored a run, her last at bat. She is one for two on the day, grounded back to the pitcher, Malk, and singled her last at bat. Takes the first pitch high for ball one. So two outs here, top of the sixth inning. Lady Quakers lead four to two. Big thanks to our sponsors today, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, Wood Electric, Cush Financial Group, Wendy's, Buckeye Career Center, Wayne Door, and, of course, coming up at the conclusion as DeVore takes it, ball number two. So, uh, stick around for our Dumont Sporting Goods postgame show, and, of course, we'll announce our McInturf Realty player of the game as DeVore takes strike one on the inside corner. Now two balls and one strike. Vandal getting a big jump over there at second base, but the Tornadoes aren't worried about her with two outs. Just worry about the batter. So Malt gets what she wants, rocks and fires. Outside corner, strike number two to Zoe DeVore, the right fielder and number nine hitter for the Lady Quakers. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Top of the sixth inning, Quakers lead 4-2. 2-2 to two. Two, two pitch, high and outside, ball number three. Runs the count full now at three balls and two strikes to DeVore, the number nine hitter and right fielder for the Lady Quakers. Sun's starting to peek through out behind us. I think it's too late to warm us up. I think it is too. That sun's going down. It's going to get colder as the night goes on. So the payoff pitch. Outside corner, strike three. Jenna Malk gets DeVore looking for out number three here in the top of the sixth inning. Runner left, and after five and a half, the Lady Quakers lead four to two. Back after this with Big Z Sports. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters, and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Hi, I'm Zach Motais with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency. Or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in downtown New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, or in Strasburg. Providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes good luck this season. Back to Dover Park, bottom of the sixth inning. Lady Quakers lead four to two over the Lady Tornadoes. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas, as the Dover Tornadoes come to bat here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Going to be four, five, and six. Charlie Reese going to lead it off for the Lady Tornadoes. Change up inside corner, strike number one from Jillian Howard. She's pitched a great game here today, only giving up the two runs. The home run and the unearned, unearned, unearned run way back in the third inning. 
The 0 1 pitch swung on and fouled off down the first base line for strike two. Howard's pitched a great game here today for the Lady Quakers. Malk's pitched a great game as well. Had a couple, had a rough first inning, but uh, has done a nice job since then. Lady Quakers lead 4 to 2, top of the, or bottom of the sixth inning, excuse me. Ground ball to the second baseman. Fires on to first, and it's going to be a low throw in and out of the glove of the first baseman, Jackson. Cardani did a nice job to field it, but threw it a little bit too low for Jackson to handle, so that's going to be a base runner for the Lady Tornadoes. And Charlie Reese gets on. That's going to be an E4. I'm going to give an error to the second baseman on that. Yeah, Cardani had trouble getting it out of her glove. It turned out to be the problem there at the end. So Susie Pelt steps in, checks her swing on a high pitch for ball one. So Reese now on first base after the error by the second baseman, Cardani. That's a big base runner to start this sixth inning. The big bat of Malk, a few batters away yet. The 1-0 pitch swung on and fouled off. Back behind us for strike one. One ball, one strike now to Susie Peltz, the first baseman. Wears number 10, bats from the left side. I'm a little partial to lefties. My son's a lefty when he played baseball. He's a left-handed golfer now, so I enjoy watching lefties bat and do things in the athletic world as that pitch goes low and outside for ball two. Of course, one of my favorite baseball players of all time was left-handed and the King Griffey Jr., the sweet swing of the lefty there. Two to one. 2-1 pitch going to be lined in the left field. Nice job by the left fielder to field it. Get it in on a one hop there to Cardani. Almost gets the runner at second. But that was a nice sharp hit there by Susie Peltz to line that ball for a base hit into left field. Runners now on first and second with nobody out. Going to bring up the catcher, Maddie Bantam. She is 0 for 2 on the day. Grounded back to the pitcher twice in the ball game. Tornado's sitting good right now. No outs in the sixth inning. Going to be a bunt. Going to be fouled back for strike number one. Sorry, I misspoke there. Bantam actually struck out and uh, flew out to the right fielder, DeVore, her last at bat. Nobody out here. Two on. Fouled off again. Change up has her out front. What a beautiful change up by Jillian Howard. Had Bantam way out in front for out number one here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yeah, nice job right there. Come out of the first two pitches, a little bit of speed, got the strikes, got ahead in the count, throw that off speed pitch, set her back down to the dugout. So one out now here at the bottom of the sixth inning brings in Sarah Clark, the second baseman. She's 0 for 2 on the day, grounded out to the second baseman and back to the circle her first time up. Takes the first pitch high and outside as they try to fire down the second. Does love day. To get the runner at second, that would have been Reese, but she got back in time. But the count to the batter, Clark, is going to be one ball and no strikes. 1-0 pitch going to be lined just over the head of the second baseman as DeVore gets the ball back in very quickly, fires it to the pitcher. Now we have bases loaded after the single by Sarah Clark. She flipped it off the end of her bat into right field, and that's going to load the bases and bring up Kara Lint, the left fielder, she uh, reached on an error and scored one of the two runs for the Dover Tornadoes and struck out. First pitch, swung on and fouled off back behind us for strike number one. Somebody's car is back there is taking a beating tonight. We have Reese at third, Pelts at second, and Clark at first. Yo, one pitch, swung on and missed for strike two. Loveday tried to get the runner at third again. Nice job by the left fielder, Vandal, to back that up. Or that would have been a run here. I'm sure Coach John Dupke saying, hey, quit throwing the ball around. No balls and two strikes to Carol Lint. One out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Bases full of Lady Tornadoes. The 0-2 pitch. Swung on and driven into right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. DeVore picks it up, fires it back in. 
and holds the runner at third, but that's going to get a run in to make it four to three. The Dover Tornadoes have cut the lead down for the Quakers to one now at four to three. Bases stay full. As the tying run now at third base, and that's going to be Susie Peltz at third. Kalar at second, and Lint now at first base with the RBI single. Well, the problem you got now is you only have one out. So you got to get something here. You're going to get the big bat of malt coming up with the bases juiced full of Lady Tornadoes. Let's see how the Lady Quakers handle this one. Bases are juiced here full of Lady Tornadoes. Your number nine hitter, Madeline Faulkner, up. She is 0 for 2 on the day, reached on an air. She pops it up in the infield. That should probably be an infield fly rule, and it was called for out number two. So they get the out on the pop out, but that's going to bring in the big bat of Jenna, Ma uh, Jenna Malk. She has a home run on the day, hit one out of here, clear defense by about 30 feet. She reached on a single. And walked intentionally her last time up. So she's been on base all three times today for the Lady Tornadoes, who trail four to three. Two outs here, bottom of the sixth inning, bases full of Tornadoes. The first pitch, changeup, strike to Jenna Malk. Tense moment here in the bottom of the sixth inning at Dover Park. Two outs, bases loaded. Tornadoes trailing four to three with their big bat of Jenna Malk. At the plate, down, no balls, and one strike. Swing and a miss. She took a healthy cut at that one. She tried to clear the bases, and she tried to put another one out of here and just came up empty on that, Shannon. Yeah, nice shot with Howard right there. Brought a little bit of heat with it, brought it down low. Malk just couldn't get around on it. So no balls, two strikes. Nope, time called by Jenna Malk in the batter's box. She swung pretty hard on that last pitch now, stretching out her uh, left leg there a little bit. Steps back in now. No balls, two strikes, bases full of tornadoes. And the 0-2 pitch. Change up. Pops her up, and that's going to get out of play. And a foul ball going to remain. No balls and two strikes to Jenna Malk. In two outs, bottom of the sixth inning. Quakers lead four to three. Bases full of tornadoes. No balls, two strikes. Howard delivers. Swing it. Line drive up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. Going to get one run in from third. Going to get another run in from second. And that's going to be a two-run single for Jenna Malk as the Dover Lady Tornadoes take the lead five to four. Nice job by Mulk right there. She waited, got the pitch she wanted. So Jenna Mulk with a two-run single to give the Lady Tornadoes a 5-4 to four lead. Kara Lint over now at third base. Malk on first. It's going to bring up the third baseman, Olivia McHugh. With two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Top of the order coming up in the top of the seventh inning for the Lady Quakers. You're going to have Loveday, Sowesky, right and Mason, if they can get anything going off of Jenna Malk, who just knocked in the go-ahead run for the Lady Tornadoes. So McHugh steps in, first pitch. Outside for ball number one. Laney Kohler on deck for the Lady Tornadoes, Charlie Reese in the hole. The 1-0 pitch. Swung, swung on and popped up and out of play for strike number one. One ball and one strike now on Olivia McHugh, the third baseman. Where's number one? 
Bats from the right side. Two outs here, bottom of the second inning, or bottom of the sixth inning, excuse me, three runs in for the Lady Tornadoes. Another changeup by Howard. Going to be out in front is McHugh for strike number two. One ball and two strikes now to McHugh. She is one for three on the day. The one-two pitch. Swung on and missed, strike three, and that's going to do it. But three big runs, two of them off the bat of Jenna Malk to give the Lady Tornadoes the lead, five to four, headed to the seventh. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. The past 30 years, the residents in and around the Tuscarawas County have made the call to the Realtors and staff of McInturf Realty for buying and selling their residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all of those communities, there is nothing better than high school sports. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season. And make the call to McInturf Realty, 330-364-SOLD. Or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Do you hunt, fish, sew, or have a hobby that you would like to share with someone? Hi, this is Noah Sugg with Brig Brothers Big Sisters, and we are faced with our biggest commitment in matching 56 Littles with Bigs. We will match a little with you that shares the same interests and enjoys the same things, so you can do what you enjoy and change the life of a little at the same time. To learn more, we ask you call 339-6916 or visit bigs4kids.com slash volunteer. Thank you. Top of the seventh inning here at Dover Park as the Lady Tornadoes have taken the lead 5-4 to four over the Lady Quakers after a three-run bottom of the sixth inning. Three outs to get the win over their rival today here at Dover Park, but they're going to have the top of the order to deal with. Reese Loveday, Sarah Sewesky, and Maddie Wright, Ellie Mason, if they can get anything going here today. Nice to see Loveday stay in the game after taking one off the uh, side of the helmet her last at bat. Malk starts this inning with nine strikeouts. Now she's got the top of the lineup for the win. That gave her fits back in the first inning. Let's see how the Lady Quakers can adjust here. The first pitch to Loveday. Swung on and bounced right back to Malk. She fields it, throws on to first for out number one. One pitch, one out here in the top of the seventh inning. Now batting for the Lady Quakers, the number two hitter, number 18, Sarah Sewesky. She is one for three on the day with a strikeout, a ground out back to Malk, and an RBI double back in the first inning. Five to four, top of the seventh inning. Sewesky tries to slap it down the third baseline, and it goes foul and out of play for strike one. Yeah, top of the lineup had their way with Malk in the first inning, but since then, they've had no hits against her, just a couple walks, and then the hit by pitch on Love Day. But other than that, Malk's kind of controlled the top of that lineup. You know, one pitch going to be fouled off at the plate. Four strike number two. No balls, two strikes to Sewesky, the senior. Pitcher, designated player. She's just hitting today. The 0-2 pitch. Slap down the third baseline. Foul. Count remains. No balls. And two strikes. One out here in the top of the seventh inning. Dover leads 5-4. to four. The 0-2 pitch. Slap down the third baseline and just foul. Past head coach John Dubke for the Lady Quakers. Count remains, no balls, and two strikes. Now the 0-2 pitch again. Slap back to Malk in the circle, and that's going to be out number two for the Quakers here in the top of the seventh inning. It's going to bring... Going to bring up your number three hitter, Maddie Wright, the shortstop. She struck out. She's flown out. And she grounded out to the second baseman with an RBI. Two outs here, top of the seventh inning. 
And the first pitch strike on the outside corner to Maddie Wright. Malk brought some heat with that one. She came right after. Stay tuned for our Dumont Sporting Good post post game show, and of course our McInturf Realty Player of the Game. We'll talk to the winning coach and our Player of the Game as Wright swings and misses to make it no balls and two strikes with two outs here. Top of the seventh. Ellie Mason on deck, hoping to get a chance here today with her team trailing five to four. Quakers have led the entire way until the last inning. The 0-2 pitch swung on and fouled off, off the light pole and right back into the field. Wright couldn't do that again if she tried. Quakers led from the jump. They were up 3-0 after, uh, after the top of the first, and Dover just took the lead in the bottom of the sixth inning on three runs, two off the bat of the pitcher, Jenna Malk. The 0-2 pitch. Inside corner, strike three, and the Lady Tornadoes come back to win today here at Dover Park, 5-4 to four over the Lady Quakers after they strike out Maddie Wright to end the ball game. Again, final score here at Dover Park. The Lady Tornadoes knock off the Lady Quakers 5-4. to four. We'll have our Dumont Sporting Good post-game show. After this, you're listening to Big Z Sports right here, right here with Claxon Communications and Big Z Sports on YouTube. Back after this with Big Z Sports. If you're planning a major concrete project, you need the help of Stocker Concrete Company. From precast concrete products to ready-mix concrete, sand, gravel, limestone, and concrete block, the professionals at Stocker Concrete can help you get started and keep you on the path to completion using the best materials you can find. Stocker Concrete is the concrete material provider you can count on. See them at 7574 Route 36, Janaden Hutton, or call 740-254-4626. Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has just what you're looking for, so your athlete has the best gear for the sports they play. Dumont's has a large apparel selection and can handle your customized screen printing as well as embroidery for your team or business. For sporting goods and for all your apparel needs, Dumont Sporting Goods in Dover and Canton has everything you want to play and look your best. At Gillen Body Shop, they know that when their business is needed, it's never planned, and that can cause you quite the inconvenience. That's why Gillen Body Shop makes the process as easy as possible for you by making sure the work is completed right the first time. And Gillen Body Shop's experienced staff gives all completed work a 100% guarantee. So when those unplanned repairs to your vehicle are needed, there's only one choice. Gillen Body Shop on Cary Avenue in New Philly or find them on Facebook. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what you need, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Are you ready to give your home a new look? Look no further than Wayne Door, your one-stop shop for all your residential needs. Garage doors, entry doors, windows, and patio doors, Wayne Door has everything you need to upgrade your curb appeal. With 24-7 emergency service, you can trust their technicians to be there when you need them most. Stop by the Dover showroom on State Route 39 or visit waynedoor.com and let the experts help transform your house into the home of your dreams. Wayne Door, more than just garage doors, from the people you can trust. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarora County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net.
Welcome back to Dover Park. Final score here today, the Dover Lady Tornadoes come from behind with three runs in the bottom of the sixth inning to knock off the Lady Quakers 5-4. to four. Shannon saw a great pitching matchup. Jillian Howard and Jenna Malk both dealing in the circle today. Jenna Howard, Julia, Jillian Howard uh, kind of kept the uh, Tornado bats quiet most of the game. They got to her in the bottom of the sixth inning, and uh, Jenna Malk did the same for the Lady Tornadoes. She did it at the plate as well today for the Lady Tornadoes. Yeah, in, in this circle, they, there was two different types of games. Malk just come in. After that first inning, she gave up some runs, and after that, she just kind of overpowered the Quaker batters, kind of kept them you know, at bay all day, got 10 strikeouts there. And, and Howard, she only had a few strikeouts. But she did a great job placing the ball. She got a lot of help from her defense. But like you said, right there in the uh, bottom of that sixth inning, the, the Tornado batters was able to get a couple runners on early in the bottom of that lineup, and then it brought up that big bat of Mulk. And, and I kind of said that in pregame, like that's – She's a beast, man, and she can do it in the circle. She can do it at the box, and she is a, she's a phenomenal player, and she's only a sophomore. Absolutely, and, uh, of course, Jenna Malk uh, today got the win in the circle, had 10 strikeouts, gave up the four runs, but she was three for three at the plate with a home run, three RBIs, scored a run, and, of course, the big hit of the game, uh, the two-run single to give the uh, Lady Tornadoes the lead and eventually the win here today. As you mentioned, uh, only a sophomore for the Lady Tornadoes, and, uh, you know, we're in our Dumont Sporting Goods post-game show, and, uh, you know, I think uh, we know our McInturf Realty player of the game is going to be Jenna Malk. She did it in the circle, like we mentioned, 10 strikeouts, gave up the four runs, but three of those were in the first inning, and then she really settled in. She finished with 10 strikeouts, but really did damage at the plate as well with a big home run and back in the first inning. Like I said, she hit it out of here by a good 30 feet. And, uh, you know, she did it uh, at the plate today, three for three with the long home run, three RBIs, and a run scored for the Lady Tornadoes. Again, our McInturf Realty player of the game is pitcher Jenna Malk for the Dover Lady Tornadoes. Shannon, great doing another, great doing a softball game with you. Uh, good to be back out at the Diamond here, and uh, hopefully it warms up for us as we continue to go on through the season. Of course, it's early April, so the weather looks beautiful next week. Are you with me at all next week? I'm, I got Tuesday and Wednesday. Are you with me? I, I don't know. I don't know what the schedule is next week. I, I know we have a lot of guys who want to do a lot of games this year, and I, I'm not quite sure where I'm at on that list. All I know is the couple games I'm supposed to do already have been rained out. I know, right? We're supposed to do a game together. It got rained out uh, tomorrow uh, morning or tomorrow afternoon. Now the uh, first pitch is going to be at noon over at New Philadelphia. Myself and Chris Kale will be on the call for the Garraway Lady Pirates and these New Philadelphia Lady Quakers. They will uh, first pitch there at noon over at New Philadelphia. Uh, of course, uh, then Tuesday. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, back at it Tuesday as we'll be out on the hill in Garraway to uh, watch Tusky Valley and Garraway softball. And Wednesday, Shannon, me and you are back together out at Strasburg for a, a good matchup. Going to be a great matchup, Connaughton Valley at Strasburg. Going to be a, a real fun matchup uh, next Wednesday. The defending two-time defending state champ, the Strasburg Lady Tigers, trying to get to uh, Akron for the third year in a row. Yeah, and Connaughton Valley is a very solid team. Coming in, you know, that, that could be a big battle with, with those two schools in the same district and region and stuff. Connaught Valley was down in Myrtle Beach along with Stralsburg was down there. Connaught Valley, their first win down there at Myrtle Beach, knocked off the, de the defending, I think, Division II state champion from Ohio down there in uh, Myrtle Beach. So going to be a very good game between those two uh, programs. For sure. Again, final score here at Dover Park. The Lady Tornadoes knock off the Lady Quakers in the rivalry game 5-4. to four. Big thanks to our Claxon Communications crew of Judd. Natalie and Leo here today helping us uh, sound good, look good, and helping bring you all the sights and sounds here from Dover Park. Big thanks to Adam Sowesky for setting everything up and, uh, of course, getting things arranged for us uh, today here at Dover Park. And, again, as the... Uh the tent blows away right at the end of the broadcast. Hey, it lasted the whole time except uh, right there as I was closing closing down the broadcast. Again, myself and Chris Kay will be on the call tomorrow morning starting at about 11.40 for uh, New Philadelphia and the Lady Pirates of Garraway. Again, big thanks to everybody here today for my partner Shannon Thomas. I'm Joe Geckler saying so long, everybody. Thanks for listening to tonight's presentation of Big Z Sports and Claxon Communication High School play-by-play -play action. 
Be sure to subscribe to Big Z Sports on YouTube, follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter, at Big underscore Z Sports. For the best coverage of high school sports, there's only one Big Z Sports.